Tuberculosis is communicated from one person to another almost always through the air. This film will show how airborne infection takes place, how the pattern was verified, and how such spread of infection can be controlled. Until a few years ago, we did not know the actual mode of transmission of the germ. There were several notions, however. Through direct contact with germs on the bedding of tuberculosis patients, on their clothing, in dust that accumulated in their rooms, or carried in moist droplets, coughed or sneezed into the air. The droplet theory was nearest the truth, even though particles as large as droplets, dust, or lint actually cannot reach the depths of the lung necessary for infection. Transmission begins at the source, usually a person with open, untreated tuberculosis. To understand how it happens, one must know the particular mechanics involved. Strong expiration, <coughs> such as sneezing or coughing, <coughs> blasts forth air from the lungs. At the same time, it shears off droplets from the secretions lining the respiratory tract. <coughs> Once outside the body, these droplets, the larger of which we see as mist, evaporate rapidly. Their solid residue, called the droplet nucleus, may contain one or more tubercle bacilli. These tiny nuclei are light enough to remain floating about until vented to the outdoors. They follow wherever the air currents lead. If this contaminated air is enclosed in a hospital room or a home, it carries the threat of infection to all susceptible people within the area. At some moment in this exposure, the susceptible person inhales an infectious particle, drawing it into his lungs. <coughs>